In the last lecture, we used the snapshot property to retrieve the route parameter value. Now, the snapshot property only returns the initial value of the route. So, for some reason, if the value of the route parameter changes, in that case, the snapshot property will not return the updated value. Let's understand this with an example. So, let's open this course component.html file and here let's add an anchor element. And inside this anchor element, let's specify router link. And to this, let's first wrap this router link within square brackets. And then inside these square brackets, inside the quotes, let's specify the path. So the path should be slash courses slash course. Okay. Then we also want to append an ID. So let's say the ID is 101. So this ID is the ID for the first course. And in the link, let's say, go to first course. Okay, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and let's go to courses page. And here, let's click on this show details button. So here we are in the course with this ID 103. Now just notice what happens when I click on this, go to first course link. So now what has happened is when we, you know, when we clicked on this show details, we are redirected to this route. So here, this value is assigned to this ID property. Okay, so to this ID property. Now, when I click on this go to first course link, just notice what happens. In the URL, the value of the ID parameter has changed to 101. But for some reason, the content has not changed. So why is that? Well, just remember that this is not a bug. This is how Angular behaves. This is the default behavior of Angular. And this behavior is because we usually retrieve the value of the parameter in the ng on init lifecycle hook. So that's what we are doing here. We are retrieving the value of route parameter inside this ng on init lifecycle hook. And this ng on init lifecycle hook gets called only once when the component is fully initialized. Okay, so here, when we are clicking on this show details button, an instance of this course component will be created. And when that course component is fully initialized, the ng on init lifecycle hook of that course component will be called. And this ng on init lifecycle hook gets called only once. We already know that. Now, when I am clicking on this go to first course link, here, the component is not changing. The component is same, right? So when I click on this go to first course, the component here is still course component. So when the user navigates to the component again, the Angular does not create a new component. It does not create an, a new instance for that component, but it reuses the existing instance. And since it is using the existing instance, the ng on init method will not get called again. And that's why this new value, this new ID value here will not get assigned to this course ID property because this method is not getting called. And inside this method only, we are retrieving the value of this ID property and we are assigning to course ID property, right? And since this method is not getting called, the value of this ID parameter will not get assigned to this course ID. In the same way, since this ng on init method is not getting called, the value of this course property will also not change. It will still store the same course, which it was initialized with when this ng on init was called. And that's why the view here is not changing. Okay, so remember that this snapshot property does not update, it does not return the updated value of route parameter. So we should use this snapshot property only when we know that the parameter value is not going to change over the time. But if the parameter value is going to change over the time, in that case, instead of using the snapshot property, we can use an observable. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to comment these two lines of code. And instead, now we are going to use observable. So on this active route, let's first access this active route. We have this 
param map now this param map we are not calling on snapshot property okay we are calling it on activated route property and if i hover over this you will notice that this param map is going to return an observable so let's go ahead and let's subscribe to that observable and we have learned that to this subscribe method we can pass the next callback function which receives the value emitted by the observable so here to this callback function let's specify a parameter let's call it param and inside this param we will receive the value which this param map will emit okay and inside this callback function let's set the value of cos id for that let's say param dot and let's call this get method and let's pass the name of the parameter which is id and once we have the value for this cos id we want to get the cos from the courses array in the courses service based on that id so let me copy this line and let's paste it here okay with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and let me go to the courses page first and now when i click on the show details button here we are in the details page of that course and here now when i click on this go to first course you will notice that the id has changed in the url and with that the content has also changed so now it is displaying the course detail of the course with this id 101 okay so here when the value of this id property will change this id parameter will change this param map will return a new value it will emit a value and since we have subscribed to it every time it emits a value this callback function will be called and inside this callback function this cos id property value will be set and based on that cos id we will uh, assign this course with the proper course okay so remember that if the value of your route parameter is not going to change over the time in that case you can simply use the snapshot property but if it is going to change over the time in that case you should use the param map the observable because the snapshot property will not return the updated route parameter value but this observable will do that now one more thing remember here is that here we have subscribed to this param map observable now when this component will be destroyed angular will internally unsubscribe from this param map so that will be taken care by angular but it's always a good practice to unsubscribe from an observable explicitly so here what we can do is we can use ng on destroy method okay we can call this ng on destroy method and to use this method let's also implement on destroy interface and inside this we want to unsubscribe from this observable so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a new property let's call it route param observable okay let's assign this route param observable with the observable returned by the subscribe method okay so to this property we are assigning the observable returned by the subscribe method now inside this ng on destroy we can simply unsubscribe from that observable so let's say this dot route param observable dot unsubscribe okay so here we are explicitly unsubscribing from this observable now we don't need to do this because angular will take care of that but still it, it's a good practice that we explicitly unsubscribe from an observable